Hello and welcome to Flipping Through the Internet's number one Mad Magazine news, review, and interview channel. And today we're flipping through Mad Magazine number 103, released June 1966, our price 30 cents, which is indeed cheap. Now, you may have noticed that um, I didn't flip this issue over. That's because this cover is about to disconnect, it's about to detach, and I don't want to push it past its limits this is the second time i'm going to be browsing through it and uh i think that's going to do enough damage as it is but before we go any further before we talk more about this issue i want to say hey thanks so much for tuning in please remember hit like hit subscribe leave a comment down below if you haven't already anyway um you want to support me in another way flipping wait Patreon.com slash flipping through. That is another way to support me on Patreon. Um, what do you do? To support me on Patreon? Well, support me on Patreon, you get uh, where's the stuff? You would think I would have it ready, just ready at hand. You get a six set of stickers. You could get give me enough of your money. You get a cool 3D printed stencil, and you will get boom, some of these bad boys. The um ec buttons um only available on my patreon um i don't know i think those are like so cool i sort of want to make them more widely available because i think they're cool i think other people would want them too i have to figure that out figure out if it's feasible for me to do that anyway if you want these are the people that are supporting me on patreon as we speak reflection of perfection Dude, you have to check the Patreon so you can send me your address so I can send you stuff. Frank Schneider, Ed. Wait, no, no. Active. God damn it. Reflection of Perfection, Frank Schneider, Misimo, David Strickler, Megan Mackering, Shane Buckley, Bobby Weigel, Cam Hayden, Rob Wilson, Rod Mead Sperry, Andrew Goldfarb, Casey Orion, Little, Cozy Nostril. Thank you guys so much for the support. I hope I can keep on earning it. With that, let's get back. Let's get back to the show. Wait, where am I? There I am. It's me like doing my hair. Um, anyway, this is a Norman Mingo cover. There is something weird about how this is set up, though, right? To have the. It's it, okay. It's weird until you think about it, I guess, right? They're trying to give the illusion that God, he's so tall that the Mad logo, which is up here, is down here. So he's that much higher above it. Um, I don't know. It's kind of cool. It would have been really cool is if they played with perspective and like turned this, made it like uh, wider at the bottom, or would it be narrower at the bottom, wider at the top, and then like tilted this? You were like looking down at him. That would have been cool. Anyway, it's still cool. I like it either way. It's just kind of weird having the Mad logo not halfway, a little less than halfway. Um. must be careful with this issue look at this though there's a lot of fun stuff in this issue i'm not gonna lie guys i'm i'm tired when i was flipping through this and it's like there's so many words there's like this is it's number 103 1966 they weren't fully in the magazine format right like right when they switched over it was like a magazine a lot of a lot of words they moved away from that at this point but it's still some of the stuff it's like do you guys get paid by the letter or something um here we have that um famous five finger mad thing which i think looks kind of cool um you have uh flip the bird who i'm not sure was named that yet and then you have um oh that's it just flip the bird in a straight jacket and that right in. i guess alfred e newman that counts for something right anyway so uh here we have the vital features alfred e newman's quote this summer buy yourself a buy <laughs> this summer buy your girl a bikini it's the least you can do for her bro if only alfred e newman saw the bikinis of today all right check this out um they were this is mad 103 but what had come out 
um, they were getting all of the issues or all the photographs from people reading Mad Magazine number 100. And here is uh, Chuck Connor from Hollywood, California. Chuck Connors. Was he the guy in Shane? I think Mad did a send up of Shane. No, Shane, come by. I especially liked this, though, because he references a poem that I really enjoyed as a child. Each issue of Mad is a refreshing and hilarious personal experience, even when the subject matter is Chuck Connors. To paraphrase Rudyard Kipling, though you've beaten me and flayed me by the living God that made me every time it's really paid me to read your crazy Mad Gazine. That comes from uh, the poem Gungadin, though you've beaten and you've flayed me by the living God that made me. You're a better man than I, Gungadin. That's really good writing for an actor, right? Anyway, there's a bunch of Hollywood so-and-sos who, um, you know, like Mad Magazine. They're just trying to get some of the shine from Mad Magazine, help their career. But, um, yeah, too bad for them. Here is The Agony and The Agony. Um, a movie parody. What is it called? The Agony and the Ecstasy or something? This is the story of the most dramatic single event in the life of the immortal Michelangelo, the supreme interior decorator of his time. But before looking at the man, let us examine some of his masterpieces. I'm beginning to realize I have no idea what they are talking about. I don't know. I might have to. <laughs> I might have to come back to the to the comments to receive an explanation. Uh, was the agony and ecstasy of, was it Charleston Heston in a movie about an immortal man? That sounds like a sick film. That sounds like exactly the type of movie I want to watch. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, I need to know more about this. Is that, I don't think, now I'm thinking that's not Charleston Heston. But who's, <laughs> all right, so it's about some guy painting to the Sistine Chapel, all right? Forget it. Let's move on before I embarrass myself even more. Fathers, I'm going to read this whole thing. Not the whole thing. You know what I'm saying. Hey, guys, don't you wish you could grow up fast like tomorrow and be a father so you can have your turn at making your kid's life miserable? Well, not so fast, fella. Don't think your old man has it made. In fact, he's really got the lousy end of the stick. How come? Well, between the time he was a kid and the time he became a parent, something terrible happened, mainly child psychology. Years ago, a kid had to worry about his parents' feelings. Now, when he's old enough to get his lick, he has to bow to the psychology books that tell him, consider the child above all. That's why we say fathers are two-time losers. Artwork by George Woodbridge. Writer Stan Hart. Got kind of some fun George Woodbridge. Not the best George Woodbridge. Not the type of George Woodbridge that makes you go, oh, whoa, that's George Woodbridge. Whatever, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, but here we are. Fathers are two time losers. When it comes to report cards, as a boy, Irving Blutes would shudder whenever he brought home a bad report card. It meant he would be giving up fun time to concentrate on schoolwork. Oh, dang. Dad's about to beat his ass. Jeez Louise. I would say that that is probably an area in which uh, the world has improved. Uh, if there's less child abuse, that's, I would, I would venture to say, a good thing. Today, a father must take total responsibility for his son's performance in school, so Irving still shudders at the sight of a bad report card. It means he'll be giving up golf time to bone up on the new math so he can concentrate on helping Junior with his schoolwork. It's convenient for Junior. Dude, new math. There's a... New math is a big thing. They even had, like, parody songs about new math. I forget I forget the guy who did the song. Um, but math is, you know, math is math. Oh, jeez. I reckon this. When it comes to reading material... As a kid, Jeff Landy had to hide his girly magazine from his parents because he knew that if they ever saw him with one, they'd think he was a dirty little boy. <laughs> because it's not healthy to put too much emphasis on sex, 
Jeff still hides his girly magazines because if his kids ever saw him with one, they'd think he was a dirty old man. Well, I don't know. Well, you guys know I'm a prude. So, when it comes to athletic achievements, whenever Bob Mushblack was benched during a ball game, he would suffer a terrible embarrassment and long for a quick, painless death. After all, what son wanted his father to think he was a failure? That's why my dad never came to my ball games. In today's child oriented society, father is judged by his son's accomplishments. So Bob suffers terrible embarrassment and longs for a quick, painless death when his son sits out a game. After all, what man wants his friends to think he's a failure? Dude, this is like, honestly, this is the, this is the plight of, of man, right? Of the, of the male. People don't appreciate the hardship and the silent suffering that must occur. Anyway, I'm going to read this one too. I, gotta, I just really like this illustration. And uh, I forgot it was there. So we're going to zoom in on this one. Zoom in back. Close your eyes. Don't get motion sickness. As a boy, Lou Gresby was forced to share a room with his four brothers. And so he couldn't wait to grow up, get married, buy a home, and finally have a room of his own. The psychiatrist claimed that locking the parents' door might symbolize rejection to an impressionable youngster. Lou now has a room with his own steady stream of little intruders trooping through. They include his own four kids, their 30 friends, and two strangers who are just passing by. Dude, that's not cool, man. How can, you can't be a good parent if you're all tuckered out because you can't sleep. Here we have the haircut by um, Donna Martin. I was... I don't know if I talked about this on the stream or not, but I'll tell you the story anyway. I was trying to show my daughter Mobius. I got the um, uh, artist edition of uh, Silver Surfer Parable with Mobius and Stanley. And uh, it was really interesting because I was trying to show her and like it was, uh, she was feigning interest. I could tell she wanted to go back to her Mad Magazine. And uh, I said, well, hey, kid, what? What kind of art do you like? Like, what are you drawn to? What really, really grabs your attention? And she said, Don Martin. Without hesitation, Don Martin. So it's uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, I mean, I remember as a child loving Don Martin. It was, um, it is just the right amount of kind of silliness and has its own very distinct style. So. Yeah, Don Martin, look at it. Everybody loves Don Martin, right? Okay, guys, now here's something. Mads, share the wealth income tax form. Now, this is, this sounds very communist, and you guys know how I feel about that. Um, but I didn't read it, so I don't know. Why didn't I read it? Because it's full of words. That's why. It's full of words. It's absurd, the words that I see. Um, gosh, I could be like, um, what should I call it? Uh, who is that guy? Dr. Seuss. Yeah, that's who I am. I'm the Minnesotan Dr. Seuss. How the new mad share the wealth income tax form bonanza would work. The old way was only tax accountants making money. Present tax form requires uh, figure work only, so most taxpayer hires a hire accountants to handle entire returns. Taxpayer pays accountant a fee for this service, which is, which in this case seems to be a real bargain, only two dollars. Return is examined closely by IRS accountant, whose salary is probably around about eight thousand dollars a year. Taxpayer ends up paying for. Two dollar accountant's blunder. Next time he will be wise he will wisely look for five dollar accountant. Winds up in jail. Wait, isn't that I thought I hire an accountant so that I won't wind up in jail, so I can just blame him. Is that not how it works? New share the wealth tax form requires services of a writer, among others, in addition to an accountant. So taxpayer now pays five dollar fee to the accountant and also two dollar fee to writer for his help in filing out returns. 
Return is examined closely by $8,000 a year internal revenue service accountant and also $8,000 IRS writer. And taxpayer learns second lesson, which is that a $2 writer is no better than a $2 accountant. Um, so you have uh, Bonanza section for artists, uh, Bonanza section for poets. Uh, Schedule M, the medical expenses claimed as deductions. Um, property losses claimed as deductions. Here's the thing. Taxes are so boring to me that I don't, I can't even be amused by this. I feel, I feel bad saying it. I'm sure it's hilarious, but it's like, it's putting me to sleep. It's awful. It's oppressive. I hate it. Here we have the lighter side of junior high. All right, guys, what do you say? Should we give uh, old... Davy Berg, uh, a shot. Let's let's see what he has to offer. All right. Zoop. We'll go to this one. Listen, dear, you've been absent from school for a few days. Don't you think you should call one of your classmates and find out what's been going on? Yeah, I guess so. Hello, Amy. This is Joni. I've have I missed anything important at school? I have really that important. Gee. Wait, wait, not so fast. Let me get a pencil and paper and write this down. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh-huh, got it. Boy, I'll say I missed something that's important. This is what she missed. Uh, Madeline Albert is going steady with Roger Kemp's. Teresa, what is that, Simone, broke up with Michael Zane. Ellen Fiedler got Don Close Fiore's identification bracelet. Ooh, wait, his medical up bracelet? He's diabetic. Give it back. Uh, Stephen Rain asked Mary Kinsey for a date Saturday. Stan Hunk is still unattached. Oh, my. Like, you knew, you knew what it was, right, before we got to it? Of course. Uh, the first word in today's spelling test is appreciate. The second word is mechanical. The third word is representative. Beg your pardon. What was that last word? Representative. Repre what? Representative. Could you spell it? <laughs> you guys, I don't pick the bad ones. I, I hope you believe me. Okay? I don't. I don't. I'm not just seeking out the, the worst of the worst to show you. I pick them at random. Okay? Louise. Here we have another one that's just like, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Some purchase tags few people, people ever get to see. Animals for the movies incorporated. Dear discriminating motion picture producer, the gorilla you have just purchased will give you years of satisfactory service and allow you to turn out hundreds of grade B movies. No special care is needed for your gorilla. Treat it as you would any other common vicious man killer. For best results, your gorilla should be given a factory checkup every 5,000 bananas. Wash your gorilla once a month and more often if you plan on eating on the set. A dry cleaning or ironing your gorilla will result in severe damage to you from a very angry girl. You know, it's like some of this is... Um, it's just corny a little bit. They had like some corny. I, this is people's golden era of mad. And there are some, there are some home runs, some grand slams even. But I think, I think people look at this era of mad with rose tinted glasses and they're missing a lot of pretty corny stuff that got passed through. Um, and some of these issues are not that good. Um, so for all the people that like really like to rag on modern mad, uh, especially like the sort of kind of political stuff, which I'm among you. I I wasn't a fan of the the super political mad stuff later on, but um, every single era had its drawbacks, right? And like I've said the whole time, every single era had its brilliant parts to it. It's I don't think there's any era that you could point to that doesn't have brilliant moments in it. Um, 
and that mean and I mean in every issue, brilliance in every single issue. Um, this is something I I always enjoyed. Um, when they, uh, and you would think that this is a Frank Jacobs uh, doing a a spoof of a famous poem on the face of the barroom floor, but it's Tom Coke, and uh, it's illustrated by Jack Davis, and these Jack Davis illustrations, dude. Zooey Mama. That's all I have to say. Um, he's so great. I unfortunately, as much as I love the poetic spoofs, and I wish they had done more of them. I wish they would continue to do them. Um, they did them like well into the eighties, but um, like uh, was it the Raven that they did, and it was all about the about Ronald Reagan? It was brilliant, and that was a um, that was a What's his face one? You know the guy. Um, but I'm not going to read all of this. And rather, let's just like cruise through these amazing Jack Davis illustrations. I have to like carefully make sure I get this cover so I don't like golly. All right, dude, look at them hiding out. That cop slouched down. Really good use of that craft tent paper. Look at this dude cruising by on a moped. Dude, even the lady, even the that lady's beating his ass. Oh, this poor dude. Now this is I I really like this panel. How all I mean, so if you look at the the pan, you know the all of the line work, it's basically just as detailed as this. But then it's not. You don't have the brushed in blacks or as much of the craft tint. It's just left white to like push it into the background. Um, but there's just as much to see and admire about it. It's really, really cool the way he did that. Jeez, um, I think I'm like ripping this cover more. Holy smokes, look, he's pouring, tug that beer, bro. And then look at, he becomes one of them, right? Isn't that, like this is what's so great about it. It's about um, you know how people can um, you know people can change and uh, become what you may call it. They can be part of the group, right? You think somebody's an outsider and they're they should be treated poorly, but we're all the same. We can all be bikers in a biker gang too. Moments of brilliance. You're about to see one of them. You're about to see two of them, actually. But this one right here, um, this George Woodbridge, this amazing George Woodbridge cartoon written by Don Edwing. Yeah, Duck Edwing. And here he is, the classic Superman. Look at this chump walking. He's about to get flattened by a safe. And Superman comes and shoves him. And uh, he just goes up and shoves Superman. This is like all-time great. Um, Mad Magazine stuff, I have to say. I absolutely love it. No, it'd be fun to do is something like this. Um, have this colored, right? Like, you, um, they've colored some stuff in Mad, but, like, what if you colored it the way that a comic at the time would be covered? That might be pretty sick. Um, in fact, I'm, dude, I'm going to take a picture of this. Maybe I'll picture it and then print it out and try to watercolor it. That would be fun. That'd be a fun little thing to do, right? Yeah. And then here we have this. I'm going to do, I want to do like a rundown of all of these mad primers that they did. Because um, they did so many. They did so many of them. This is the mad hypocrite primer. Um, a primer is the thing that kids read in, in primary school elementary school um see the man he is a hypocrite okay this is what it has that um that this is what it has going for it guys bob clark bob clark's the man so here's the man he's a hypocrite he looks just like you and me doesn't it make you wonder about you and me the hypocrite hates injustice he worries about equal rights for minority groups right now he's worrying about his new neighbors his new neighbors are members of a minority group <laughs> They have just moved in. They are looking for equal rights. But of course, that's fine with him. But he worries that they may be uncomfortable in this neighborhood. He worries that they may suffer from prejudice in this neighborhood. He hopes they will be happy in this neighborhood. 
but he will never know because he won't be in this neighborhood. He is moving out. It's pretty awesome. I mean, it's like it captures a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and captures it brilliantly with Bob Clark's artwork. Frick, dude, I want some Bob Clark artwork, some original mad artwork. That's my goal. See, the American communist. He became a communist because he wanted to be different. Now he looks forward to the day when communism takes over. It makes everybody the same. Logic, logic, logic. The communist said he believes in brotherly love. But don't argue or disagree with him, or he'll hate you. This hypocrite raves about ending injustice. Of course, if injustice did end, he would have nothing to rave about. Wait, he could always rave about how great it is to live in Russia, or China, or Cuba. Come to think of it, he really wouldn't have anything to rave about. It's like, these things are a little bit hit or miss, but when there's a great artist on it, it really can carry it, uh, carry it quite uh, ways. And then, speaking of ways, here's Honey Ways. ways. Sorry. It's another um, movie parody by Mort Drucker. Mort Drucker pulling double duty with some beauties. Look at that beauty. Anyway. Um, and now I'm like running out of time. Here are, I mean, the problem with horrifying cliches is that they were so popular that they have become cliche. I've seen all of the horrifying cliches so many times that it's hard to get excited about it. But um, Phil Hahn and Paul Coker Jr. One of the one of the great mad things, right? Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I love the horrifying cliches, but I'm moving on because we've all seen them about a million billion times. If you haven't, just hit rewind and pause and zoom in very, very close. Um, and here we have Fraternity Magazine, which I must just, I, we just saw this. This is in the medical issue on uh, the last live stream with, um, with Kyle Bridget. Um, but here we have some... Um, <laughs> Panty raid season 1966, and uh, you know, row, row, row quarterly. This is again something that I I cannot say how happy I am that they stopped doing these fake magazines within the magazine. I'm sure I'm sure you guys have all read them, people who watch this, but um, I haven't, and I won't. So you'll just have to tell me. What I'm missing out. And here my back cover is about to fully detach. And so I'm definitely not going to fold this in. But um, a wonderful cigarette ad at the end. It just did. It just split all the way. Golly. Darn it. I thought I would make it. I thought I could return it to its the bag and board and it would be safe for the rest of its life. No such luck. You guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment down below. It's the greatest way to help this channel grow. It's the, the greatest gift that you can give me. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Toodaloo.